Discovery ISS, this is Houston. Are you ready for the news conference? Houston, Station and Discovery are ready for the news conference. Tom Joyner, syndicated radio show. This is Mission Control Houston. Please call Discovery and ISS for a voice check. Okay, I got I to gotta do this intro, right? Huh? We're back? We're on the air? Yes. No. They said start the event. Okay. Um, we're not on the air yet. Hold on, hold on, hold on, and I'll start the event. Got 20 seconds. I got this uh, script I have to read, right? Yes. Okay, to connect with the uh, space shuttle. Um, space shuttle, station, this is the Time Joiner Morning Show. How do you hear me? Good morning, Tom. The International Space Station has you loud and clear. There's a long delay. There's a long delay. Um, we are ready for questions. No, that's what they're supposed to say. That's what they say. Okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> okay, then. are you ready for questions? Hey, Tom, we're ready for your questions. This is, uh, I assume this is Commander Alan Poindexter. He's the mission specialist. And do you have uh, uh, astronaut Stephanie Wilson there, sir? She is here. Hi, Tom. How are you? I'm doing very well. And how's it, how are things going? They're going very well. It's a great day on the space station. We were able to uh, install our cargo carrier, and we'll be delivering a great experiment to the International Space Station. I understand you had some problems when you docked on the space station with your radar antenna. Is everything all right? Will you be able to make it back? Everything's all right. We'll be able to make it back just fine. And especially since we're here at the space station, we can use uh, some of their assets. Now, NASA has uh, this. This is the first crew in space with three female and two Japanese astronauts in the crew. Uh, did you get your hair done before you went up in space? I always try to represent NASA as best I can, so hopefully I'm looking pretty good. And uh, actually, this is the third, uh, the third flight with three women on the space shuttle and the first with four women uh, in space together as we joined the Tracy Caldwell on the International Space Station. And yes, the first with the two Japanese astronauts in space. And, and um, how, did you, how did you, Stephanie, get into... Um, uh, the business of uh, space shuttling or being, <laughs> becoming an astronaut. What was your, what was your, what, what is your story? Where are you from? What kind of classes did you have to take? What was your struggle to get where you are today? Well, I was very interested in math and science, and I uh, interviewed an astronomy professor in middle school, and that was the beginning of my uh, dream to travel in the stars. And your struggle? Was it a struggle to get to get to where you are? Struggle takes a lot of hard work and dedication, so the young people out there, 
they study hard and uh, stick with it, they can do it too. I'm in Orlando this morning with the uh, Census Bureau. We're counting, we're counting right now. Have you filled out your census form before you went up in space? did fill out my census form before uh, coming to the space station, but I did have to file an extension on my taxes. <laughs> because this mission is 13, 13 days long. So, well, will you, uh, we, I know we don't, we don't have any more time, but there are a lot of parents who are listening right now. And what can you tell the parents on how to uh, encourage their kids to do what you're doing? If they uh, encourage their children, if they uh, support them and expose them to different opportunities, uh, going to museums, uh, going to airports, uh, all of the opportunities that, that school field trips have, and uh, just open opportunities to them, then they will dream, have big dreams, and they can pursue uh, whatever their hearts desire. That's cool. And uh, do you have your iPod with you? What are you listening to up there in space? have an iPod. I have some, uh, I have some tunes to uh, exercise to, and I also have some spiritual music for reflection. Discovery, ISS, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the Tom Joyner syndicated radio show portion of the event. Please stand by for a voice check from WVIT-TV. Discovery ISS, this is WVIT TV. How do you hear me? We read you loud and clear. A lot of children say they want to be an astronaut when they grow up, but a Connecticut man is living the dream. The space shuttle Discovery rocketed into orbit on Monday with 40-year-old Waterbury native Rick Mastracchio on board. Rick joins us from the International Space Station, along with two other Discovery crew members, Commander Alan Poindexter and Mission Specialist Stephanie Wilson. Hello. How are you today? I'm great. I understand there's a delay. We understand that. But Rick, let's start off with you. You played a special lead role on this trip, so tell us more about that. Hey, I am uh, one of the spacewalkers along with Clay Anderson, and what we'll do is tomorrow we'll go out for our first spacewalk to begin the installation of a new ammonia tank on the International Space Station, and then we'll finish up that task over the two more spacewalks later on in the week. Now, Stephanie, you helped set a record for the most women in space at the same time. Explain this history-making mission. It's very historic. Uh, we, of course, are very fortunate to have, uh, have had many women uh, come before us to uh, uh, fly in space, and so we're very thankful for their contributions and their dedication to make it possible for, uh, for the, the ladies on this flight to have an opportunity. Uh, we have many in the uh, astronaut office that are very supportive and, and are good mentors, and so we have a lot of uh, experience to draw from. Well, you are making me extra proud. Alan, this next question is for you. The crew is on a 13-day mission. What kind of work do you have planned? I know you're very busy. Our, we are a, it's a really busy flight. We, in addition to the three spacewalks that Rick and Clay are doing, we have uh, about uh, 12 or 13 tons of cargo that we have to get across from the uh, multi-purpose logistics module, that's our cargo carrier that we brought up in our payload bay. We attached it to the uh, space station this morning, Stephanie and Naoko did, and uh, just a few minutes ago we opened the hatch for that cargo carrier, and uh, we're starting to pull supplies out now. So for the next uh, several days we'll, uh, we'll be transferring supplies, science rack, research equipment over to the space station, uh, in addition to a new sleeping station for one of their crew members. Nice. Now, Rick, back to you. Growing up in Waterbury, I had to ask, did you always dream of going into space? I always 
interested in math and science and studying things and uh, studying about space, but I never really knew that I could become an astronaut until I was uh, out of graduate school and I saw an advertisement in a magazine and decided to take a chance. And nine years later, I was selected. Wonderful. And the shuttle program comes to an end after nearly 30 years as shuttle astronauts. Will it be a sad day for each and every one of you? I don't consider it a sad day at all. Uh, you know, the shuttle has left a great legacy uh, through, throughout its history. Uh, incredible things have been done with the shuttle that uh, probably could not have been done with any other vehicle. Uh, when you think about the Hubble Space Telescope and the service missions to it, and the uh, assembly and uh, and the building of the International Space Station, and the use of the International Space Station, the uh, shuttle has left an incredible legacy. It's a very versatile vehicle, and uh, and uh, I think it's uh, time to celebrate. Uh, 30 years of flying the vehicle and, and not think about uh, it going away. You're right. It's more of a celebration. I have to ask each and every one of you, what do you do on your downtime? I'm just curious. Well, one of the great things about being in space is being able to look at Earth and the view out the windows. And so uh, a lot of us spend time uh, looking at Earth and uh, reflecting on the spectacular view. Yeah, I have to agree. We uh, spend a lot of time looking out the window, any spare time that we have, which is not much, I should say, and then we just uh, enjoy this enormous space station that we have. This thing is incredible, and it's just, uh, it's just fun to explore. Well, I'm looking out the window here, and it's nice, but I don't think it's nice as what you have up there. Thank you all so much for your time. Thank you for taking part in our VAO event. Discovery ISS, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the WVIT TV portion of the event. Please stand by for a voice check from Fox News Radio. Discovery ISS, this is Fox News Radio. How do you hear me? Good morning. We have you loud and clear, and we're ready for your questions. Thank you. We're going to pause for just a moment to let our network radio stations join us. Okay. I'm Mitch Davis, Fox News Radio, and joining us live from the International Space Station, 215 miles above the Earth, Shuttle Mission Commander Alan Point Dexter and Mission Specialists Rick Mastracchio and Stephanie Wilson. First, the practical stuff. Commander Poindexter, as we talk, you've got a shuttle without a working KU antenna. Is that worrisome for you? Not at all. We've got a lot of, uh, a lot of capability and a lot of redundancy in our systems. Now we're docked to the International Space Station, and we're able to use their communication systems to uh, get our data and voice uh, down the ground and then uh, back up as well. Well, for, for Rick Mastracchio, you're doing three spacewalks on this mission, and with the shuttle program winding down, you're one of the more experienced NASA spacewalkers now. Most of us down here will never get the chance. What does it feel like to walk in space? A difficult feeling to describe. Uh, the, the incredible views of the Earth from inside a spacesuit are just... They're just beautiful. The Earth is, is a beautiful place to look back upon. You know, we spend a lot of effort trying to get off the planet and come into space, but we always spend a lot of time looking back where we came from. Uh, the spacewalks are, are a lot, very difficult, they take a lot of physical and mental energy, and uh, there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of risk out there. So we train real hard and we do the best we can. And Stephanie Wilson, this is your third shuttle flight all on the Discovery. Are you starting to feel a little attached to her by now? Definitely am. Discovery's uh, been a great ship. She served me well uh, on two flights, and uh, we are having a little bit of trouble with the KU, but otherwise, she's a great vehicle. The folks in Florida at the Kennedy Space Center did a great job uh, preparing her for this mission. Going back to the commander first, it was 30 years ago this week that the first space shuttle took off from Florida and landed a few hours later at Edwards Air Force Base, took off... 
131 flights later, what have we learned and, and what have we gained? I'm sorry, if, uh, I'll repeat it. 131 flights after the shuttle first launched uh, 30 years ago today. What have we learned in those 131 flights, and what have we gained in, in all those years? Well, uh, that's a great question. Uh, I could start with uh, where we are today. The International Space Station is uh, a wonderful research facility and a world-class laboratory here uh, orbiting 200 miles above the Earth every day. The uh, combined weight of the shuttle and station is uh, approaching a million pounds or just over a million pounds. And uh, it's a marvelous facility. We have 13 people on board right now. And without the shuttle, we would not have been able to uh, build this facility the way we did. You can also look back at uh, the Hubble Space Telescope, its deployment and the servicing missions to the Hubble. Again, uh, all due to the versatility of the space shuttle, we can get, we get the magnificent views and the great science and research that, uh, that the Hubble Space Telescope provides. For all of you, uh, please, as you know, NASA's plans for the future have changed, and those changes will affect the three of you very profoundly. Do you think this could be your last trip into space, or do you think you'll be involved as the space program evolves and changes? Well, I can't speak for the others, but I certainly hope to return to space someday. Of course, I'm not getting any younger, uh, but uh, NASA will uh, build a new vehicle in the upcoming years, and I hope to be part of it. And I agree with Rick. This is certainly a special experience, and I hope to have another opportunity to perhaps uh, be a member of a long-duration flight on the International Space Station. One last question, and that is, there are youngsters who will be listening to this. What do you want to tell them if they're thinking they want to go into space? Give them some direction. What should they be doing now? I think the best direction we can give our youngsters today is to is to uh, is to dream big and uh, and follow those dreams. Uh, work hard to attain your goals. Do something you enjoy, and and work very hard at it. I think that's. Uh, that's the key to the success in life is to do something that you're happy with and, and work really hard at it and uh, be the best you can be. Can I ask you to pass the mic over and get the same question to the other two, please? What do you want to tell some youngster getting ready to go into space? What do they study? What should they do? Yes, and uh, they should study hard. Uh, getting ready for space, the math and science are good uh, good things to study. Engineering, uh, going into aviation uh, through the military or other career fields are, are very good. And the most important thing is really to work hard, try hard, and to stick with it. Yeah, I think the commander and Stephanie summed it up pretty well. It, find out, find something you really enjoy, work very hard at it, be dedicated, and uh, put in an application to NASA and see what happens. Thank you all for your time. We've just spent a few moments with Commander Alan Poindexter and Mission Specialists Rick Mastracchio and Stephanie Wilson on board the International Space Station. I'm Mitch Davis, and this is Fox News Radio. Discovery ISS, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you. Copy, thank you. And thank you, Tom Joyner Radio Show, WVIT-TV, and Fox News Radio. Discovery and ISS, we're now resuming operational audio comm on spacecraft.